Hey guys, Mike here at Ops Factory. You're watching Lightbulb Season 1, Episode 1, and today we're going to be covering pointer versus value receivers in Go. So let's jump straight into it. So what we want to do is we want to define a custom type. We're going to call our type data. And we're just going to throw a few fields on it. A, B, both strings. C, which is a uint. In fact, that's actually made this data structure unexported, just to get rid of that warning. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw a receiver on it, but we're not going to make it a pointer receiver. As you can see there, we're just going to be doing data with no pointer. And let's call it change value. And what we'll do, what we'll have this function do, this receiver do, actually let's call it change A, because we only really want to manipulate one field. And what we'll do is we'll change A based on an in, inbound string. And we'll just basically set D.A to whatever, whatever you give us whatever we receive. So if we go ahead and actually utilize this now, so if we create an instance of our data structure, then we go ahead and actually assign a value to A. We'll actually assign a value to B as well, just to kind of make it useful. And we'll even assign a value to C as well. Very important value. You may get the reference. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll actually just print out the structure just as is with fields. That's what the percent plus V does here, and obviously with a new line as well. And let's see what we get when we actually just print out the data structure. So if we head on down to PowerShell and we actually run our code, what is it we get? Probably what you'd expect. A equals hello, B equals world, C equals 42. Pretty simple, really. Okay. Let's see what happens if we actually manipulate A directly on the struct, on our instance of the struct. So data.a equals goodbye. And then if we print that out again, what do we get? I think the results are going to be pretty obvious. We should get A equals hello. Sorry, A equals goodbye. B equals hello. Sorry, my apologies. A equals goodbye. B equals world and C equals 42. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's exactly what we got. That was pretty obvious, really. But now what happens if we actually use our receiver method? So if we do data dot change A and we pass in a new string, so let's go with hello again, dot, 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 and now print out the data structure again. So what are we, what are we expecting to see here? I think we're going to see A equals hello. Oh, okay. A equals goodbye and B equals world. C equals 42. So A wasn't actually changed, even though we actually did data.change A. Hello again. That's because data isn't a pointer. So if we change that and we make the data receiver actually receive a pointer, what we get when we run it is A actually changes. Pretty simple, right? That's actually just because we have a pointer and when Go passes it in as a pointer, we can manipulate the fields on the struct, on the instance of the struct. We can demonstrate this by showing another receiver, a simple one, we'll call it do maths. We'll return a simple uint where we just take C and multiply it by 100. And we'll output that out. And that's actually the valid use case for a receiver when you don't need to manipulate the fields. You make it a non-pointer. You just want to access the fields and do something with them. So if we execute our do maths, we will get exactly what we expect, which is A will equal exactly what we expect, and now we'll get 4,200 because we multiplied it by 100.